Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Danecast. This time, we have another game from our friend Tim Boyd. He's playing the Red Terran in the top right of Zen LE, and his opponent is the Zerg player, the purple, no, blue Zerg. We've got red and blue colors here. Blue Zerg, so it looks like it's probably a ladder game here. A, uh, a blue Zerg going for a very early spawning pool here. Very cheeky build here, going for a 13 pool against him here. And, uh, oh, it might have even been a 12 pool, but in either case, a very, very early pool, which is a bold choice against a Terran because the first thing Terrans do is build a wall at the top and get ranged units behind it. So as long as Tim scouts this, as long as he's a little careful, he should be in a pretty decent position here to defend this. But er anything can happen, guys. Anything can happen. This is a bronze to silver league game. Anything is possible here. We have to see how Tim handles the pressure. What happens? There's a gas being taken from the Zerg as well. He could be going for Zergling Speed. He could be going for Roaches. You've got lots of options for aggression early on. But the thing to remember about the Zerg aggression here is when it's this early, it's very committed. It has to do damage. As long as the Terran is doing a somewhat reasonable build, it's going to be... Uh, if you hold against the Zerg aggression, you're going to be in a fantastic position because the Zerg is cutting their economy by a lot. Tim is already two workers ahead of the Zerg at this stage. Is he even making any Zerglings with this? I don't know why you would make a spawning pool this early if you're not going to make any Lings with it. I don't understand. He is going to eventually get his gas, but nothing about this makes sense. Nothing makes sense. He's going to go for his expansion now. Um, but I, but these are just hashtag just, just bronze things, guys. He's going to go for the 12 pool into the gas, into the expansion without making a single Zergling. I mean, maybe he was counting on Tim scouting it and overreacting, but Tim is cool as a cucumber. Look at him. He's just building his base within his base. He's like, I'm just going to build it up here. That way, I don't have to scout, and I always get it up no matter what. So nice, from, nice moves from Tim to get this base up nice and safe and sound. I love this. I, th I hope he does this every TVZ, actually, because until you get to the point where economy is becoming an issue, like, you know, Diamond or Masters, this is going to make you safe against so many things, and it's going to... Um, it's just it doesn't cost you all that much so i like this move from tim going for the safe expansion in his base and he's mining away he's making scvs he's doing all the reasonable things would like to see a factory from him as soon as possible maybe right here bam look at that i can predict it he's making a factory he's gonna probably go for some hellions with this reactor as well so all very reasonable things from our friend tim some reasonable things from Cadmium as well, going for some nice Overlord spread. Doesn't have this Overlord over here, which would be the, the pillar that would let you peep on everything at the Terran's natural. But he is potentially going to put this one into the dead space near Tim's, uh, outside of Tim's main base here. So he could pop in and have a look. Just have a little peep on what's going on and have a look and oversee what is happening in Tim's base. And it uh, looks like Cadmium, Cadmium is going for the traditional... 12 pool into late speed into three hatch before speedlings build um, obviously a very strong build in the bronze meta right now it's uh, it's really throwing your opponents off it's really just throwing a lot of information at them that they don't know what to do with and uh, tim tim's not bothered by it because he just doesn't scout like why would i scout when my opponent isn't doing anything that makes sense is the motto and uh, it looks like it's going to pay dividends for tim at this stage because he's just going to be getting his own stuff going he's just going to focus on spending his money making workers he's got a natural expansion on the way he's even got some some marines here i'm not sure if this is intentional but they're in the cracks of these minerals which actually will give them limited surface area for zerglings to attack which is actually pretty nice looks like he's going to move them out consolidate his marine force and uh, maybe look to move out onto the map here shortly and uh, i don't know maybe kill a couple of overlords who knows but i really am worried for tim's marines at this point because again he didn't go for the hellions he's just going straight for marine tank which could be very vulnerable to a committed zergling attack especially with no wall here at the front for tim boyd but looks like our zerg friend is opting to just make drones 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 he's gone up to 37 drones here a very very greedy zerg here going up to massive amounts of drones he does have a single overlord here but he's just counting on the fact that he doesn't think tim will attack him anytime soon so he's going to be able to make lots and lots of drones he's even going for a lair probably will just be adding every single tech building in the near future here i imagine and tim is going for a fairly committed one uh one 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 push here so he's got marines off of reactor no upgrades for them he's got a starport and he's got a tank uh coming out from his 
his factory here. So he could be doing a very early Marine tank push here. This would actually be very scary. There's nothing for Zerg to deal with this right now. If he were to just push right now, he would probably just win the game, to be honest. Um, of course, Zerg would then start doing something. He'd probably start ma massing uh, Zerglings, which could be very scary because you don't have the Hellion support to deal with massive amounts of Zerglings. But, I mean, you never know, right? Looking back at your games and just seeing like, oh, he had no units at this point. Tim's on 19 army supply to the 10 army supply of his opponent. Um, this is why scouting is important because you want to start to know, is my opponent being super greedy? And if he is, should I punish him? And uh, in this case, the answer is yes. Tim definitely should be punishing. Imagine if Tim was moving out on the map right now, sieging up this position, killing queens, and stopping this Zerg from getting away from this greed. This is exactly why you need to threaten that. So three tanks, handful of Marines, and a medevac from Tim. Still not going to push just yet. He's going to be adding his second and third barracks with tech labs to get his 1-1 upgrades, adding a few tech lab, adding a few supply depots as well. So all in all, I'm happy with the macro from Tim. He's still floating about a thousand minerals, but so is his opponent. And, uh, you know, it, I mean, his opponent can probably make 10 mutilas at a time to spend that money. But the important thing is that Tim is getting that money to begin with. Don't really know if he needs the gas from both of these refineries at his natural just yet. It might be a little bit heavy on the gas considering he's only making tanks at, um, at the moment but he is getting his stim and his combat shield so he's going to be able to spend it for the time being and could be looking to add a third base sometime soon here but uh, again the fact that there's no pressure on the zerg at this stage means that he's up 20 workers over tim so everything is going perfectly for the zerg player because the terran has not put any pressure on him whatsoever and he's played greedy as a result so he's even got his spire he's got his plus one flyer attacks on the way he's getting his investor upgrades he's getting his carapace he's getting double double evolution chamber so all of the long-term things are going to be in place for the zerg player but none of the short-term things he's invested zero in army he has does he even have an army somewhere? What is his army supply? I think it's just five queens, right? He's probably got one, two, three. Does he have two more queens? Where is queens? Where is the rest of his army supply? This is infuriating. Um, anyway, so he's got... Wait, are queens three supply each? Who knows? Anyway, the important thing is that he's made no units. Tim is finally attacking now, but this is now too late for this attack because now the Zerg is going to be making infestors and... Uh, Again, unless this attack hits right now, it's going to be too late. So it is going to be nicely timed with this stim. So I really like this from Tim. He's going to be attacking along with his stim timing, which is going to be a very strong attack timing. He's on 49 army supply to the 18 of the Zerg opponent. And the Infestors aren't actually finished yet. His 2-2 is starting, but there's still no units. And the Zerg still has not started to make units yet. Now he realizes, okay, I need to start making units. Panic, panic, panic. Zergling, zergling, zergling. He's holding the Z key. But again, with this... With this for, with this army for Tim, he's already in a nice position. He's, he can fill the creep tumors here as long as he... Well, he's got some splash damage on this here. But as long as he pushes this carefully, he's going to get this fourth base. I think it's a really nice position for Tim to be in here. Uh, could get this, this escaping uh, drone here. But the longer Tim stays, the more of a chance... Uh, the Zerg has to create units. So all this time he's creating, creating, creating. So I would like to see Tim, if he got, if he did that much damage with no resistance, that's when you push into the third, Tim. Smell blood, push into the third. But keeping this whole army alive, killing the fourth base, he can't be too unhappy with the way that that went for him. So he's got a small little group of Marine Marauder. He needs to make sure he saves these, returns them back, and he's consolidate. he needs to consolidate his army. He hasn't lost anything, and he's done lots of damage. So, so far, so good for Tim. He needs to be adding his third base, which he's doing. He needs to be adding a lot more supply. But look at this Zerg. He's floating 1,700 minerals while Tim has spent nearly all of his, again, floating a lot of gas because of this and not making enough SCVs here. But not a bad situation to be in. He's gone up to double factories making Hellions, realizing that most of the Zerg army is is going to be zerglings but now these infestors are going to be dropping fungal growths on this army this is so hard to watch there aren't enough medevacs to heal through this and as long as they get the value out of these this is going to be devastating for tim boyd but he's still got lots of army back home if he consolidates this he still should be fine unless he keeps getting fungled and there are a limited amount of fungals but they've already got so many kills look at how many kills one kill from him 12 kills from this infestor and zero from this one. So this one Infester here, he had to dive into the army. He took a lot of damage, but now he's a veteran. He's got 12 kills under his belt. Soon he'll be a higher rank than his commanding officer. Big Fungal connects onto the majority of Tim Boyd's army. He goes a little bit too far on creep. He's a little bit... He's going in a little bit half-cocked here. Gets absolutely surrounded and cleaned up. Not the way Tim wanted that fight to go. Still having his reinforcements catch up and kill a fair amount of these Zerglings. But now, 
Tim's got only he's got a smaller army supply than his opponent now even though his opponent is floating so many minerals there's so much better upgrades for him he's on four bases now and he could be looking to take a fifth pretty soon so this Zerg's macro is absolutely out of control he's got his creep spread all over the place the window of time for Tim's pushes has now passed and now that he's dealing with a fully fledged four base Zerg with two two upgrades a spire and infestation pit he's even got a hive at this stage he can basically throw whatever he wants at Tim every time Tim pushes this is the nightmare scenario for Terran because you it's gone too long your window of time for doing damage has now passed now you need to try and just bulk up I guess you just turtle and try and get a 200 200 army that can trade well against whatever mid-game trash army the Zerg has put together but Tim is so far behind in upgrades here. We don't even see the engineering base working here. So now he's going to be dealing with 2-2 two, two with 0-0 zero, zero of his own. So really, really hurting on those upgrades. Only now taking his third base at 11 minutes. So definitely, even though he built this base very early, because he was focused on his army, he's not quite saturating it yet. So he's very behind in the worker department. Only 40 workers from Tim. But maybe he can put together a, a, an efficient army. He's got four tanks here, five tanks. He's got a bunch of Hellions, Marine Marauder. This can make magic happen. If you get the tanks in a good position, this, this army will actually melt. The tanks are going to do absolute work against this. But it really depends on the positioning and it really depends on the timing as well because... Zerg is going to be teching up. He's making Vipers, he's getting his 3-3, and he's even getting his Flyer attack. So if he decides to go for Broodlords at some stage, it's going to be terrifying for Tim's army to deal with. Tim needs to move out and secure this base because Zerglings could just run in here and do damage on his lifeline. This is your lifeline. This is what's keeping you in the game. This base with its mining, because your main is going to be mining out. It's only eight patches, and uh, shortly your natural will be as well. A uh, little bit of an attack coming in with these Zerglings. Might catch out a few of these tanks here for their troubles. This is not what you want to be doing. You need to keep your army together. Two tanks going down for Tim. Nice little pickoff with these Zerglings here. And uh, Tim's not prepared to deal with that. So a big counterattack at the other third base of Tim here. is going to lose a few SCVs and these refineries. This forces Tim's entire pushback. This might have been his chance to get back in the game. As he does have a similar army supply. But he doesn't have any upgrades. So he's going up to a 2-2 upgraded Zerg army with only 0-0 zero, zero bio and now that he's lost his tanks he's lost the meat of this army he's lost the power units and he's not even getting the stim on this bio these hellions are frantically trying to kite they do get within range of this tank but now that the zerg army is on 2-2 he can just aim with these zerglings at him all day and they trade so so well now coming in with the vipers with the with the infestors he can just drop spells on him we can call this the merlin zerg at this stage he's just got millions of spells he can cast whatever he wants and he can make zerglings all day as long as he hits his injects so really at this stage uh for tim not really much you can do uh maybe take a few more bases maybe consolidate maybe just siege up and hope that you don't die you definitely need to start those upgrades though you need to start clawing your way back into this game but i think it's really the upgrades that are doing the damage here and uh, Tim is kind of just waiting to die at this stage. It's it's hard to watch. The Zerg has been so greedy. And it's easy to look at a game like this and think, oh, wow, this guy's way better than me. But actually, for the first 10 minutes, your build was ready to kill him, Tim. Your build was ready to kill him. And um, unfortunately, he just got away with being completely greedy here. He got away with being completely greedy, which is what Zergs can do sometimes, which is why I advocate for being very, very aggressive against Zergs whenever possible. So now Zerg is just making how many? Seven overlords at a time. He's getting his 3-3. Almost finishing. He's getting his Ultralisks. He's getting his upgrades. He's even getting his Carapace upgrades for his Flyers at this stage. He can pretty much afford to do whatever he wants. Meanwhile, Tim has been reset to a two-base economy. So at this point, this is what I like to say where you're dead and you just don't know it yet. Um, still no upgrade started from Tim. He's moving out. He's got three tanks here. He's got a fourth tank at his old third base. And he's trying to retake this new third base here. I like that positioning of his army. He can burrow these widow mines and protect this base. If he's got a way back in this game, this is the way to do it. Take this chokehold. Put these tanks back here, Tim. No, put them back. You don't want them on the front lines. They're going to get surrounded and killed. Put them back where they're difficult to attack. Um, and bro, these widow mines, you're in for your dear life here. Looks like Tim's going to use this as an opportunity to move out. Which actually... This is this is a great time for him. He's up to 55 army supply to the 46 of the Zerg. Um, Zerg is just do, building upgrades. I cannot believe how greedy this Zerg is. There's been so many opportunities for Tim to push here, but they're just it it just it just didn't occur to him. I guess it's just it's hard to know uh, what your opponent has, right? As far as you know, the Zerg could be 200 200 supply. 
right? You don't know, which is why scouting helps, which is why uh, putting constant pressure on them helps, because if there's ever a time where they have skipped units, this is when you're going to kill them, right? You force them, you keep them honest. Because this Zerg, I'll tell you what, guys, this Zerg is about as honest as a used car dealer in New Mexico. He is not... He's not, he's, he's lying to you the whole time. He's like, oh, I've got units. He's got nothing. He's got no units. He's just making drones. He's gone up to 69 workers on one, two, three, four, five, six bases. And what has he got? He's got six infestors. He's got some, what, seven infestors with full energy and a handful of zerglings. That's all he's got. Despite all of the economy he's had, despite all of the advantages, he's dumping everything into upgrades and he's sitting there floating 10,000 minerals nearly and 5,000 gas waiting for you to come kill him but you just you just you just don't want to because you're scared because this could all be zerglings there is no reason for the zerg not to be maxed at this stage he's trying to win the game with just infestors i don't know what the plan is here he is getting quite a few fungos on these widow mines and that these are all going to go down devastating use of the infestors this is why you need the tanks to support that you need to zone those infestors out having a raven at this stage is actually crucial so that you don't get neural parasited or fungled from the ground or anything like that. So, again, at this point, this is, I mean, God bless you, Tim. You're you're doing your best here, but the Zerg has been left alone for so long. He's basically just got an infinite money at this point. He's not even making units. I think he's challenging himself to beat you with only fungals. Um, I don't know if he's doing that on purpose or if that's just the way he likes to play, but... Um, he is doing a lot of work with these fungals and so his upgrades aren't even coming into account He's just not making any units. There's there's nothing in the production tab These vipers are sitting in his base doing nothing. He only wants these fungals. He's just making more infestors How many infestors does he have? These 11 infestors and they've got the the upgrade as well for the, <laughs> the Energy and since you don't have a raven he can just walk up to your army and do whatever he wants. This is so devastating uh, Is he gonna just neural is he gonna neural the tanks? I feel like he's gonna neural the tanks Ah, oh, this is hard to watch, boys. This is hard to watch. You, say, you hate to see it happen. The tanks are exposed. Are they going to get knurled and killed? I mean, at this point, he could probably just unburl them and have the tanks attack them. Yep. Okay, he's just he's just messing with you. This is hard to watch. Okay, they're, Tim, retreating most of his army, except for these tanks, to the safety of his other tanks and his third base. Now, finally being saturated with units and being turned into a... And it's an orbital command. Neurals both of these tanks and they has them kill each other. Doesn't really have enough because he, he didn't time it properly. So now there's this tank is going to survive, but uh, only with a little bit of health here. So this must be frustrating if you're Tim at this stage. This Zerg is just making infestors all day long. He's making a million spore crawlers. He could pretty much build whatever he wants at this stage. He's kept you on a two base economy for a very, very long time. And you fought val valiantly, Tim, but at this point, we're just waiting to see how he kills you. And it uh, looks like he's going to try and find ever more creative ways to do this. Um, so, yeah, it could... I mean, can we criticize the Zerg? Look, he's got idle drones. He's not playing perfectly, guys. He's floating 13k minerals. He's got these vipers. They've been sitting at home doing nothing. His Evo chambers are still not doing anything. So, they, he's got his 3-3, but he doesn't have his attack upgrades. Could be getting those. He's got all his spores in one spot, which makes absolutely no sense it doesn't do anything because tim doesn't have really any flying units besides vikings um so you know don't feel like this zerg is a god tim don't feel like this zerg is a god he's not that much better than you he just got away with playing exceptionally greedy you could beat this guy very easily it would just require you to do an early push so don't sweat it at all you're gonna get you're gonna get past guys like this in short order with a little bit of focus a little bit of macro tightening up those timings you're gonna roll this guy i think if you play against zergs you should play with doing faster attack timings because that you 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 tend to go for a very aggressive early game mix of units if you're gonna do that if you're gonna go for those early tanks and marines i think you need to do an early push with them to get their value otherwise they're the uh it's it's better to do other things instead build hellions to harass him or something like that if you're gonna go for those fighting units early on go for a push um, it's not the it's not the optimal strategy in the world, but it's going to give you a lot of help against these zergs that go for these ridiculous greedy plays here. So many, so many. So this is where you need a raven, right? This is where you need to start scanning. If you've got these tanks sieged up and he does something like this, you can scan and you can bop these infestors one by one. It's not as bad as it looks, Tim. It's not as bad as it looks. A nice scan here from Tim, but he doesn't have the stim to get on these he is gonna back them away a little bit but with a few fungals here he's gonna be able to kill quite a few of these 
Vikings. I like that Tim is going for a fourth base here. Needs to make sure that he's still building. And he's going for Thors as well. So this uh, this Zerg is letting Tim stay in this game a lot longer than he otherwise could. If he just made a bunch of Zerglings and A-moved him, he'd probably be okay. But I think he's going to be... I think he's going to be... Uh, continuing to troll here as long as possible. So now Tim is on a basically mostly mech army, and uh, this is going to be very vulnerable to these investors with right their... Yeah, this is really hard to watch. This is hard to watch. Can we get Epson chat? For the mech army. He's going to GG, he realizes. Ah! This is just... This is just not fair. GG. Well played. Try again next time.